Thank you, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. We're glad to see you this morning here for worship, as well as at home. Those of you who are joining us by Facebook, we thank you for your uh, presence with us through that medium. And those of you who will watch later on YouTube, we also extend to you that same uh, thanks for taking time to do that. We want to uh, move forward. We've got a lot to do this morning. We are installing and ordaining uh, deacons for the coming year. And uh, as one said, their pay period starts today. And so uh, I'll let you guess which one said that. When... <laughs> All right, y'all behave. <laughs> um, but uh, that'll be taking place later in our service. We want to welcome Alyssa Basden, who's here with her husband, Bobby. She'll be uh, sharing in music in a, in a short while, and we look forward to hearing her. Also, we have a cradle cross belated, <laughs> a belated cradle cross for Margaret Elizabeth Grace O'Neill, who was born in July. And uh, we're glad that uh, uh, Laura and Nigel are here, and, and uh, I guess both girls are down in the nursery. Oh, one's asleep, okay. All right, so I, that's one person I don't have to worry about putting to sleep. She's already there. Okay, that's good. That's good. Well, it's good to have you guys, and take that home with you when, after the service, okay? But leave me the stand, because I might need it again. <laughs> um, anyway, guests, those of you who are here, family members, we, we welcome you and are glad that you're here to share a part of this special day uh, for those in your family, and uh, we look forward to that uh, very shortly. I think that's all. So we're going to move forward now into worship as Holly comes and calls us into worship. Please stand and join me for the call to worship. So may the blessing of the God who calls the people out of Egypt call us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace a journey of challenge and risk. May the blessing of the Son who kneels and washes our feet call us out from our comfort and our safety to embrace and serve those who we meet on our journey. May the blessings of the Spirit who weaves a dream of new community call us out from our comfort and our safety to provide welcome and hospitality to strangers as well as friends. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for bringing us out here today. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts um, to your word. We ask that you bless all of those who have served um, in so many different ways, um, especially our veterans today as we honor them this week. Lord, we ask that you just lay your hand on them and fill them with your spirit and let them feel the love and honor and respect that we all wish upon them and honor them with. Lord, guide us and lead us. Let your word fill our hearts and let us take it from here. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Today's sermon is about servanthood. Our deacons, new deacons, are getting ready to um, start serving. Our veterans have already served. And we're going to talk about the veterans for a minute, and then we're going to talk about another way to serve. Our veterans have done us a great service and an honor, and it's our job to honor and respect the ones that have been sacrificed, the lives that have been sacrificed, and the time away from family and loved ones that have been sacrificed. But one of the things that a veteran did, and some still do, is protect. And I remember when my nephew was younger, he loved the little army men. And he gave one to my mom, and he gave one to me, and said, you need to keep it in your bathroom. Now, I don't know why the bathroom, but it was the bathroom, because, and, and the words of a four or five year old because he's always going to be there to protect you and that stuck and to this day I have an army man in my bathroom and so does my mom that my nephew gave to me and it helps us to remember those who served it also helps us to remember that we have a Christ that loves and protects us too so I have army men down here and some in the back please take one home and you don't have to put it in your bathroom but you can put it wherever you like to help you remember not only the veterans to honor, respect, and love them, but that we have a Christ that loves and protects us and that died for us. So please take a little army man home just to hold tight wherever you happen to put it. Another way to serve 
is through Operation Christmas Child. And that is coming up very quickly. And um, I've spoke before, it's one of my passion projects. I absolutely love Operation Christmas Child. And if you don't know what that is, Operation Christmas Child is where you take a shoe box. And these are the nice little plastic boxes, so you don't have to do one of these. Um, you can do just a regular old shoe box or a plastic box from Dollar Tree, and you fill it. You fill it with toys and hygiene items like combs and brushes and things like that. We filled this one yesterday. Crayons, deodorant, little cards, soap. There's a little basketball game, a puzzle, crayons. Whatever you feel the need is for the child you want to fill this box. You will get the box, fill it up, and then return it here next Sunday, and then I'll take it to a distribution center. These will get shipped all over the world to kids who won't get anything else other than this box for Christmas. And I don't know if you've seen the videos, but you can go and search Operation Christmas Child and look at the videos and the joy on those kids' faces when they open the box and some of the stories you read about a little kid who ended up getting a shovel, like a little plastic shovel, and he was so excited because he could help his dad now do his job. It was something his family, he thought his family needed. Um, so the blessing that these boxes bring is amazing. Our kids are going today after church to actually go to Dollar Tree and fill their boxes. So these are over here, empty boxes. Please feel free to take one. Um, just return it to the church next Sunday so I can um, get it to where to the distribution center. I also have flyers beside it that tell you what to do, all the instructions, and items that are good ideas to put in if you just kind of don't know what to put in, and even at the bottom, some of the things that you're not supposed to put in. Make sure you pay attention to that, because um, that changes from year to year sometimes. So, and then you also have your label for your box. Um, they do ask you to pay for shipping, which is $9 this year, and you just check whether it's a boy or girl that you filled the box for, or what age you filled the box for and you take the label to the top of the box. Um, one of the very cool things this year and last year, and I think it's been a few years, you can actually pay online your shipping and track your box and see exactly what country your box went to um, and, and see where you've been served and how far you've actually reached. So there are so many different ways to serve, especially this particular time of year, but this is one that's close to my heart. And again, we want to honor our vets who've already served and do continue to serve um, service now. So let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for all the ones that are here to serve and that have served. Thank you for the blessing that they've provided and given. Help us to remember to respect and honor all of them. Help us to remember that we can serve in any and all aspects. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Real quick, uh, I want to kind of extend off of what Holly talked about. I know I'm up here supposed to do the Old Testament lesson, but uh, can I can our veterans please stand real quick? If they're in the congregation. Would you mind standing? And I'll stand with you as one myself. Um, our ethos in the Navy was uh, honor, courage, and commitment. And I believe, irregardless of the branch that you served in, that ethos follows you everywhere you go, irregardless of if you are still in uniform or not. You still follow the ground rules of honor, courage, and commitment. Everything that you do, you provide honor to your country, to your fellow man. You step into every situation that you face, whether you want to be there or not, with courage. And you commit yourself to this country, to your loved ones and to your fellow man. As American citizens, civilian or formerly served, I believe that we follow the same thing, honor, courage, and commitment. We stand by our country, <clears throat> irregardless of which way the election goes or if you're happy about it or if you're mad about it. We stand beside our country. We stand beside those who have fought for it to protect it so that we can 
freely gather in this building here today and we stand beside our neighbor and vow to protect them irregardless of, of their views and sometimes how they feel about us. So for my guys that I have standing right here, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service not only to this country, but to this community, to this church, to the ones that you stand beside to your left and your right. I thank you for your service to them as well. God bless you guys. Thank you. All right. Now what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 15, verse 11. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed towards your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. middle school. <laughs> Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 12 through 17. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. 
Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The word of the Lord. Praise his holy name. for sharing. Holly and Chris, thank you as well for helping lead in worship this morning. Servanthood, the big idea. Um, that's what we're going to talk about for a few minutes. And uh, to begin, I want to read from Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 7. When you do these things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honor to others than to yourselves. Do not be interested only in your life, but be interested in the lives of others. In your lives, you must think and act like Christ Jesus. Christ himself was like God in everything, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his own benefit. But he gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. He was born as a man and became 
like a servant. That's the big idea. Be like Jesus, serving other people. He told his disciples in John 13, verse 15, one of the verses Chris read, I did this as an example so you, that you should do as I have done for you. In other words, be like me. Be like me. He washed the feet of the disciples. Why? Because they were dirty? I don't think so. Maybe, but... I think it was greater than that. He washed their feet because he loved them. He knew that it was time for him to leave this world, go back to the Father. He had always loved those who were his own in the world, and he loved them all the way to the end. John 13, 1. And he now showed them the full extent of what that love meant. We need to remember that these disciples at that moment were not an easy bunch of guys to love. They were kind of like us in a lot of ways. They were arguing about which of them would be the greatest. One of them would betray him. Another would deny him. Ten of them would desert him. But in spite of all of that, Jesus had the correct motivation for serving his disciples. And that motivation was because he loved them. So if we decide to be like Jesus, and we serve others. Why do we do it? Why do we do it? It was funny the other day, I've been talking to my grandson Logan about his decision for Christ, and we've had a couple of conversations about it. And the last one, we were riding back to my house from Greenville, and I said, I said, uh, Logan, I want to ask you one question. He said, what, Pops? I said, why? He said, why what? I said, why, why do you think you need to be baptized? Why do you think we do that? He thought a little bit, and I knew, I knew he wasn't going to be able to verbalize the answer. So I just kind of uh, opened up a pathway for him a little bit. But that's a question we have to ask a lot, isn't it? Not why do bad things happen and all of that. That's natural. But why do we do what God has called us to do? What's our motivation? Is it to soothe feelings of guilt? because we haven't done it? Is it a desire to score points with God, to earn his favor? Is it the need for others to know what we've done so they'll tell us what a great person we are? You see, we have to remember that love for others starts with a love for God and Jesus Christ. When we discover that God loves us with an everlasting, eternal love, and that we matter deeply to him, we should want to obey him. Nothing can separate us. We read in Romans a whole laundry list of everything. None of that can separate us from God's love. And one of the most important commands that Jesus gave us is found in 1 John 4, 10, and 11. And it's a restating of Jesus' words in Matthew 22 when he said, This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved, so loved us, we ought to love God one another. So, how can we be like Jesus? Have the correct motivation? Serve others because of love. Love motivated Jesus to wash the disciples' feet because he focused, he was focused on what other people needed. Be they the disciples, the man with the withered hand, the man who had been born lame, the man who was blind, the woman taken in adultery. These are all people that we wouldn't really hang out with. Yet because of his love for other people, this is what Jesus did, and it was his motivation. Our problem is we're in the business of looking out for ourselves. Many times at the expense of other people. And it was just as true in Jesus' day as it is in ours. And good Christian people are not exempt from this. While we're obsessed with having our own needs met, Jesus was different. During the Last Supper, Jesus knew that he was going to die in a few short hours. But rather than focus on himself and what was facing him, he what? Focused on the needs of his disciples. To continue those teaching moments with them before his death. 
So what's a good contrast? Well, let's contrast Jesus and Judas. Judas sought personal advancement at the expense of others. John 12, 4-6 says, Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' followers who would, rather, who would later turn against him, was there. Judas said, this perfume, this is a story where uh, Mary broke the, 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 the alabaster bottle of perfume and, and put it on Jesus' uh, feet and head. This is what G Judas was saying. This perfume is worth an entire year's wages. Why wasn't it sold and the money given to the poor? But Jesus really didn't care about the poor. He said this because he was a thief. And he was the one that kept the money box. And he often helped himself. He didn't care about the poor. He wanted that money to go in a box so he could kind of slip a little few bucks every once in a while and nobody would know. Then over in Matthew 26, then one of the 12 apostles, Judas Iscariot, went to talk to the leading priest. He said, what will you pay me for giving Jesus to you? And they gave him 30 silver coins. After that, Judas watched for the best time to turn Jesus in. He was out for himself. He didn't care about other people. But look at the contrast now. Jesus, Philippians 2, 3 to 8 reminds us, took upon him the form of a servant for the benefit of others. John 13, 3, he did not serve his disciples because he forgot who he was. He knew who he was. Knowing the Father had given all things into his hands. He knew, Jesus knew where he came from. And that he was from God. Jesus knew where he was going. And that was to fill his place in God's kingdom. But there's not only a contrast between Judas and Jesus, there's also a, par a parallel. The parallel is between dirty feet and dirty hearts. He saw, Jesus saw the disciples' dirty feet. So during the meal, he stood up. He laid aside his garments. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal with God. So he took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. He made himself of no reputation, took the form of a servant, and when was made in the likeness of men. He poured water into a basin and began to wash, wash the disciples' feet. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. And after Jesus finished washing all the disciples' feet, he got up, put the towel away, put on his robe, and returned to recline at the table with these men. Here's a key point, I think. Jesus saw the disciples' dirty feet and left the table to show true servanthood. He sees and has seen our dirty hearts, so he left heaven, came to earth to provide each of us who accept him as Savior eternal salvation. And that one more act of service would follow. The ultimate act of service. The giving of his whole life. You see, as Jesus poured that water into the basin to wash the disciples' feet, he would pour out his blood on the cross to cleanse our dirty hearts. The ultimate, if you will, gift. So what should our response be as we instill, install new deacons and ordain two new folks to the, to the diaconate today? This is not just for them. We don't get to pass the buck to the deacons to do this. Yeah, but Rick, the Bible says that, you know, the apostles were doing that. And they, that's true. Here's what, here's, in, in one short, concise, this is, I've kind of taken an off ramp here for just a second. In, in, in a short, concise sentence here, I'm going I'm to tell you what I believe deacons are to be. First, what they're not to be. They don't determine how, how many doorknobs we need to change in the building and whether we should do it. They don't determine what color to paint the hallways or whether or not to replace lavatories in the men's and women's bathrooms. That's not what deacons do. Deacons, deacons' purpose is to extend the ministry of the pastor. In a few weeks, you're going to find out. Each of you has a list of families. Jay's sitting there saying, I ain't got no family. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Each of you will have a list of households that are members of the church. And your responsibility is to be their deacon. 
That doesn't mean you wait for Nell to call and say so-and-so's in the hospital. Now, that'll happen. But it's also, you just call and say, hey, I'm Dennis McCoy, I'm your deacon, how you doing? Just checking in. You drop a card at birthdays or special events in their lives. It's an extension of the ministry of the pastor. Because it's a team concept, you know? We all kind of do this, we're all to be about this servanthood thing. And not just deacons, church members. If you're called, we are all called, we are all gifted, and we are all sent to be servants. That's the deal. We're not called to sit. <laughs> we're called to serve. So what's our response? Our response is, then is to have the right attitude, to serve others from a true sense of love mixed with a true sense of humility. Listen to these words from Matthew chapter 6. You see them on the screen. Be careful. When you do good things, don't do them in front of people. Now, I'm, I put, this is NIV up here. I'm reading actually from the New Century Version, so it's going to be a little different. Be careful. When you do good things, don't do them in front of people to be seen by them. If you do that, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to the poor, don't be like the hypocrites. They blow trumpets in the synagogue and on the streets so that people will see them and honor them. I tell you the truth, those hypocrites have already received their reward. So when you give to the poor, don't let anyone know what you're doing. Your giving should be done in secret. Your Father can see what is done in secret, and he will reward you. He will reward you. Serving out of love and humility. Again, Philippians 2.4. Don't be interested only in your own life, but interested in the lives of others. Jesus washed the disciples' feet because he understood that true greatness, true greatness comes from serving others. You know the verses. Whoever wants to be first will be last. Whoever wants to be the greatest has to be the least. And on and on. So a couple of questions in closing. Do we really want to be like Jesus? I've asked this question before. Do we really want to be like Jesus? And treat others as he did and show love regardless of who these people are or where they're from or what they look like or how much money they have or don't have or what side of farm will they live on? Do we really want to be like Jesus? And I would suggest that if in your heart you answered no, then again, let me suggest that you spend some time today quietly examining your relationship with Jesus. Because he calls us to do these things. This is what we're to be about. If you said yes, then your next question might be, then how can I be like Jesus? The answer, have the right understanding of who Jesus was and is, then begin to serve others to achieve true greatness. Quietly, unassumingly. Not for the sake of recognition, but just for the blessing that you get from serving others. You see, what happens when we do that and we go around and say, you know what I did? I did this. People are, oh man, that was awesome. You were just so, such a wonderful person for doing that. And then we walk away going, yeah, that's pretty good. Jesus is saying, you don't do that. I already know what you did. Other people don't need to know. It just needs to be between you and the individual or the situation or whatever it might be. You see, if service wasn't beneath Jesus, it certainly shouldn't be beneath us. Be like Jesus by serving others. Have the right motivation. Serve Jesus out of love. Have the right attitude. Serve others with quiet humility. Amen. At this time, we will move into a time of uh, ordination and installation. We will install two deacons first, and then I'll ask those to be ordained will come. It will be a little different this year, given uh, the uh, situation we find ourselves in and have been in,
and will be in for some time, I imagine. But uh, hopefully it will be just as meaningful uh, for each of us. <clears throat> Judith McCoy and Carl Bonner, I'll ask you to stand, please, if you will face the congregation. <clears throat> As those appointed to the office of deacon, do you now publicly affirm your own personal faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Will you strive to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord both in the church as well as in the world? Do you promise the First Baptist Church honoring Christ with your love and service as you fulfill all the responsibilities of this office? At this time, our deacon chair, Dennis McCoy, will have a prayer of installation. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have provided faithful and gifted people to serve as deacons. As we install Judith McCoy and Carl Barner to, to once again serve and assume the, their responsibilities, we ask that you will fill them with your spirit Endow them with wisdom and grant them strength. Help them to be faithful workers in your vineyard. Under their guidance, may your church grow to every spiritual grace in faith which is open and unashamed and in a committed service that promotes your reign in this world. Help Judith and Carl perform their duties with enthusiasm and humility. In their work, grant them a sense of sustained awe that is rooted in their daily adoration of you, their Lord. Help us, your people, to support them gladly, encourage them always, and respect them for the sake of your precious Son, our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may return to your seat. At this time, I'll ask Dr. Julia Bonner and Mr. Jay Tyson to come and take a seat in one of these chairs. <clears throat> Those of you in the congregation will see, hopefully you can see that, um, the response that you will share as I read and then the candidates will also be responding as well. First to the congregation. Have you members of this faith community seeking guidance of divine wisdom chosen these who now sit before you to be deacons in our church overseeing the spiritual welfare of our church? Do you wish them to be set apart to shepherd this flock? As deacons, served in, as deacons served in the early church. Amen. Will you pray consistent with the word of God, aiding them in the discharge of their responsibilities? Amen. Julia and Jay, have you prayerfully considered the responsibilities and obligations which the office you are called to fill carries with it? Amen. Will you pray you will faithfully perform the duties of deacon, studiously endeavoring to learn and do things that will make for peace, purity, and spiritual growth in this congregation. Amen. At this time, I would like to ask uh, your families to come. Julia's to stand behind her, and Jay, your family, to come and stand behind you. <clears throat>
Now, what I'd like for you all to do as families is I'd like for you to put your hands on your loved one. Okay. Of course, we normally join hands as a congregation, but we're not going to do that. I am going to ask you to stand, however. <clears throat> Let us pray together. church when uh, there was a need to set apart individuals to help serve the needs of those in that early congregation and community. And Father, set aside, they were ordained, truly set apart for that service. Lord, there are many here in this room who have experienced this uh, themselves. And Father, we practice this in the church because uh, as, a mo as it was modeled in the early church. At the same time, as we shared earlier, we ask to be servant leaders, to be your hands and feet, showing the love your love to a world lovely. Lord, you've called us not to be selective. You've called us to be who you are. And Father, we read in your scripture how you reached out to those who were on the edge of society. They were not the wealthy or the educated or the, the people who had uh, their lives together, so to speak. They were those who nobody seemed to care about. And you have called us to do likewise. So for from that, because we do, we are selfish, and we get so wrapped up in our own lives and our own business we don't have time to think about anybody else. At least that's our excuse. Father, save us from that notion and help us to do better. Father, I pray for Carl and Judith and Jay and Julia as they join to be those leaders, to help deal with the spiritual issues of our church, to reach out in our community, to be those that mobilize efforts to help those in need. God bless them. Not just these four, but the remaining eight. And those called out that are currently not actively serving, for they are actively serving. They just don't know it. Father, bless to be the church, to be the lighthouse, as it were, in the community. Father, help us to be cognizant of the fact that there are people all around us that are just going about their daily lives and it's just in a circle. They don't have any purpose or meaning. They think they do. For it's only when we come into a relationship with you that we discover the true meaning and purpose for our lives. So help people, not going up and beating them on the head with a 40-pound Bible, but simply modeling our behavior as you did, as you lived, as you ministered, as you loved. So Father, go with us, give us a new sense of commitment and determination to be imitators of you in all of our dealings, in all of our conversations, in all of our actions. And as I shared with Logan that day in the car, to help him understand a little better, when we feel tempted to do something or say something, or ask, we pause just a second and ask ourselves, would Jesus do this? Would he act this way? Would he say these things? And if we answer no to those questions, help us to be still and be quiet. For we know the world 
watches us a whole lot more than they listen to what we say. So God help us to be those kind of witnesses that will make people, that will draw people to you. And we'll give you thanks. Thank you for all of those who, who had a part in leading it through scripture and message and song. And Lord, we ask now that as we leave this place, we go with a renewed sense of, again, of committing ourselves to you to be who you've called us to be. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before we go, let me present you with your certificate of ordination. Congra yeah, you can stand up. It's okay. Congratulations. Thanks. There's not a decoder ring. I'm sorry. <laughs> Carl, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jay, congratulations. God bless you guys. You're going to do good. If I can do it, anybody can. <laughs> That might be true, but I don't know. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. God bless you. Uh, have a great week. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll uh, see you next week. I hope the service will be easier to upload today. I've done. A, I've, I've tried. I'm gonna try something new. I say that about every week, but we'll see. But uh, when the link's up, I'll post it, and Nell will put it on uh, the website so you can watch it again. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. Go in peace. <clears throat> Thank you.